that you gonna y'all gonna have sex on until the sunlight. No. Well, sunlight time, baby. Your jerk factor is on ten, Mr. Macon. I'm not gonna lie. You have gotten on my last nerve today. Could barely put a sentence together because you're smiling and laughing, because your nerves are shot, because you're lying. In another baby drama episode, Dominique Streeter claimed that after Martin Hartfield convinced her to have a baby with him, he now denies being the baby daddy just because he is married and wants to save his marriage, a part of Mr. Hartfield that Streeter wasn't aware of throughout the period she and Hartfield were together. Hmm, what really is the gist here? Mr. Hartfield asked me to have a baby with him. We were dating for, uh, about eight months, a long time. We were in a relationship, a committed relationship, with just me and him. And throughout the whole relationship, he wanted to have a baby. He said he didn't get to raise any of his. So we went to the hospital and we got the birth control taken out together. We went together. Could it be that Streeter is cooking up lies or that Hartfield is trying to play a fast one on us? For every testimony she gives, Hartfield hollers that Streeter's lying. So what is his version of what really happened between him and Streeter? According to you. The truth is, I, I believe that it's possible it's possible that she's thinking about someone else because she and I did meet, that is a fact, and we did talk, and I found her to be very attractive at the time. And I even, you know, did things to convince her that, okay, maybe I will be a guy that she could take a chance with for us going out on dates. But you were married. Things. And I made sure that she knew that. As oh well. my God. I made that lying. very clear. Wow. For a cheater, this man is bold. He did not even tell the person he was having an affair with about his marriage. This brings us to the question, how exactly did Streeter end up finding out that the man she thought was single and trying to build a family with her was actually married? Let's hear what she has to say about this. He had ended up telling me a relative's name, and I, I had went on Facebook and found the relative, then found Mrs. Hartfield page, then that's when I seen pictures of them. And I didn't even call her right away because he had told me, like, them pictures are old, she's professional, and for her image, she can't, uh, she don't want people to know that we're not together. So I believed him. Matter of fact, I didn't even call her, I text her and let her know, like, your husband's been treating on you for eight months and I'm five months pregnant. What in the world? Hartfield knew that there was no way he could escape this because this was hardcore evidence against him. So he immediately admits that he did send those nasty messages and proceeds to explain why he did. Not that we actually care because we've registered the fact that he cheated. However, let's just hear what he has to say. Because of this game that she and I like to play, that she likes to play. If I don't do that, Dominique goes ballistic. And yeah. we were playing this game, but now that we're in court, it seemed like something that some old man has been trying to hit on a young lady. But I'm telling you, that is not true. You 46 year old married man, Mr. Hartfield, what game is this you feel like you need to play with? a 22-year-old girl. One thing is for certain, this man has no shame even up until this moment. His testimony ended with him saying that he had to play some kind of flirtatious game with Streeter to cuddle her so that she would not call his wife and let her know about his affair. But the judge moves on from that and inquires about both parties' reactions to the news of Streeter's pregnancy. It was expected. He was excited. Nah, he wanted a baby. Me, that was the whole point. Uh, the deal, this is the situation. Dominique deal with so many guys, okay? She found one that was an older guy and she thought that I would be a cake, a cake daddy or however you want to call it. The thing is, is, is that she found out, hey, you're dealing with a guy that ain't got no money, so now you waste your time. Not true. That's not but true. Because I mean, Hartfield doesn't have the right to call anyone out for playing games when he holds the trophy for knowing how to play games with two women. At this point, I feel extremely sorry for his wife, who has been sitting there listening to all of his nasty escapades with a girl half his age. It's just so unfair. Knowing this, Judge Lauren decided to hear Mrs. Hartfield out. I can see when you were sitting there, this was very painful for you to hear. This is ridiculous. Did he fill you in on all of these details? and the fact he's still texting this 22-year-old young woman? No, he did not. How did you even find out about this entire affair? The text message that I received from her. You get a text message. A random text message. So, not only is he a cheater, but he is also lacking in his fatherly duties. Yet he stands there with pride, yapping away about irrelevant things. Mrs. Hartfield tells the court that after that one meeting with Streeter, she never met with her again. Meanwhile, this same husband was at the hospital with Streeter, getting excited over a child he was never even going to take responsibility for. And so, Miss Streeter, who was with you at the birth? He was there when the baby was born. He was exi excited, like, you know, that's my baby, that's my boy. I never got to see none of my kids born. I want to be with you. Let's make this work. We got a child. He needs to be in the house with both parents. Were you I telling did. her these things, Mr. Hartfield? No. I tried to get him to sign the birth certificate. The reason why, he signed it at first, but it was time for the witness to see us. Unbelievable. However, Hartfield continued denying Streeter's testimony. He claimed that he was not even there when his 
name was printed on the certificate, but that turned out to be a lie, because Hartfield also claimed that he was with Streeter when she was pressuring him to sign the birth certificate. He also added shocking information about Streeter. Here, take a look. What do you mean? You say you're not well, the only man? There's a guy in our local town that she's also told him. He's lying. I don't understand why he coming up with these lies. For me, I feel like it's an iffy thing with him. If I don't want to be with him, he don't want to be with the baby. But it's times when I have to come over and he is Your Honor, the that baby. is absolutely crazy. Nuts what she's saying. What if is? I don't want to be with her, will you look at this queen right here? Would you look at this shameless man? Clearly, he thought that Mrs. Hartfield would be on his side, so he tried to cajole her, calling her a queen. But she was not having any of it, and immediately threw him to the wolves. I stan a woman that doesn't take rubbish. You wouldn't believe this man's behavior after his wife showed him that she was not cut out for his bullshit. Wait a minute! Hold on! You can't hold, put me out. hold on, Mr. I got my own place. Hold on, Mr. Hartfield. Just a minute ago, I don't that's want your her wife was a queen. And yes, but she gonna speak like that, and she's not supporting me. She's supporting I have somebody proof else. On I don't what her well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your Honor, only by your wish. That you she, seem that like you here. getting flustered. I don't like. That's why I I stepped out and had in a court. Oh, now it's her and fault. Because I never got her support or anything. Oh Lord. Give this despicable man what he deserves. What is all that attitude and anger coming from someone who stepped out? On top of it all, it was revealed that he even had multiple sexual partners. What's worse is that he did not deem it fit to quit his antics. We all know Judge Lauren doesn't take rubbish from anyone, and she is quick to shut him up. Mr. Hartfield, yes. I'm gonna let you pipe down just a little okay, bit, because okay. your tone yes, while you're talking to your wife yes, is making me edgy. I understand, I understand. It's making me edgy too. Please sit down. I called her up to testify. I understand. So she'll be standing until until I ask her to be seated. I don't know what part of this you think you running. You don't run me, and you don't run this court. Now, ma'am, Miss Hartfield, you're saying that this was not the story that you were told. No. This just keeps getting worse. Nothing that is being said about his attitude bothers him, and he continues to make a fool of himself in court. It's so disturbing, but that's his business. What we want to know is if baby Caleb is his or not. And at this point, it might hurt a little if this man is truly Caleb's father. Anyway, let's find out. Mr. Hartfield. You are the father. Okay, that's cool. That's okay. Do you understand now what you just made a child with? Right, right. No, do you, no, no, look at me. I don't know what he told you up until this point. I will say that con men like him, they can be very charismatic. You two are both very beautiful young women. You don't have to deal with this. But I want you to see clearly in this courtroom today how he has acted. This is your child's father. When Whitaker supposedly has a baby for Shrull, a mama's boy, she feels he is being controlled by his mother, influencing the paternity doubts he has. So Whitaker wants to prove that her two-year-old daughter, Bryn Lad, is Shrulls. Just so we can understand this case, let's take a look at why Whitaker believes that Shrulls' mother influenced his paternity doubts. Because he's a mama's boy. She has never done anything but come in between our relationship. Even when we were having fights in our relationship, she was always in the middle of it. It was never just me and him, it was me, him, and his mother. Are you a mama's boy, Mr. Shroll? Yes, Your Honor, I am. I know that's right. <laughs> Say it loud and proud. So do you believe your mother has uh, come in between your relationship with Miss Whitaker? There were times that she would, but Explain. It, was, it was just to protect me. How uh, long were you all dating? The session has not even gone too far yet, and such unbelievable revelations are already coming out. Every Everyone was clearly taken aback by what Whitaker told the court, and it gets even worse. Take a look at the following clip. At one point, we were completely living together. Him and his mother moved into my house with me and my mother. And we what? Were... They moved into the house with you and your mother? Yes, ma'am. And you all were having sex and both mothers knew it? Yes. I've never heard of such room. Several times a day. What in the world? This is horrible. Yeah. Do you go to school? Well, yes, we were going to school, but we both ended up dropping out our junior year in high school. This is just too much. Clearly, what these two need to be doing is studying and meeting deadlines for their school project, not having babies. But at least Whitaker ended up getting her GED in the midst of all this. So good for her. Anyway, back to the primary issue at hand. Figuring out the beef between Whitaker and Schroll's mother. What's the deal here? If you all were all living together, why do you say she doesn't like you and she was interfering in relationships? Sounded like she was putting it together. She was always in the middle of our relationship. She even made the comment one time that I can't wait till you're 18 because I'm going to beat you. And then when she found out I was pregnant, she said, I guess I can't do it anymore now. Mr. Stroll, did you know your mother didn't care for Ms. Whitaker? She cared for her. I don't know where that she didn't care for her comes from because anytime. Of course, who would expect this mama's boy to say anything against his mother? Despite the fact that he had even proposed marriage to her in such a romantic way, these two, well, ended up in court, arguing 
arguing paternity issues. But that's not all, there's more. It appears that since the time Whitaker's mom passed away, things have changed. Both of you are acting like you were committed, but if you were committed and nobody did anything outside the relationship, you wouldn't be here. No. So let's get to the real details. What happened? What had happened? We, Her um, mom had passed away. Okay. And she got put in a, a foster home, and once she okay. turned 18, she go, went with family. I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Whitaker. Thank Very you. sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. And so, at that time, you all were separated. You were no longer living together. Wow, a lot of things did change. However, just as you can see, Whitaker felt like justice had not yet been done to the story of how she and Shrule got separated. Apparently, there is more to it than Shrule told the court. So, let's hear Whitaker's version of what exactly happened back then. I got taken into DHR custody. I was only 17. I was eight months from being uh, 18. Anyway, they put me with my aunt. And me and Christian were fighting all the time. I was hormonal. I was pregnant. His mother refused to let him come to my doctor's appointments. Okay, hold that story right there. I want to get to it. So you're pregnant at the time when this fight happened? Yes, I'm pregnant. I found out I was pregnant exactly one month after my mother had passed away. Again, Shrule's mother. It really starts to look like his mother, indeed, did have an issue with Whitaker because she keeps coming up in their testimonies. Meanwhile, Whitaker claimed that she was excited about her pregnancy because she thought that she could never get pregnant. However, the major problem here is how Shrule's mother supposedly reacted to the news of Whitaker's pregnancy, according to Whitaker. Here, take a look. He told his mother, I could hear her screaming in the background, oh God, no, why, kill me now, why? Really? No. She was screaming to the top of her lungs and she took that moment from me. She took it from me because I was so happy I finally had a family even though I just lost mine and she took my happiness. Miss Blackwell, uh, you're Mr. Schroll's mother. Because Give your side of the story. Them staying together and sleeping together. Chili, I don't know about you, but I can clearly see the cold attitude Whitaker spoke of. During her testimony, Blackwell, Schroll's mother, dropped a bomb in court. She alleged that Whitaker had admitted to her that there were seven other possible fathers. However, Whitaker quickly shut down her accusation and explained to the court what the case really was. There's only one other man that I slept with the month that I got pregnant. In our entire relationship, I didn't even sleep with seven other people. Uh, no. That's a lie right there. That What's a lie, Mr. Schroll? That she only slept with. You can say whatever you want to say, Christian, but you know because I told you before I even knew I was pregnant. I told you the day after I cheated on you. Oh, how can he remember? Shrool is clearly done with Whitaker and is only here because the paternity involves him. He definitely wouldn't remember most things that relate to their relationship. Anyway, on Whitaker's calendar every single day is outlined as the days she and Shrool were sexually intimate. However, there is also another date that stands out. Take a look at this. Know that you had sex with Mr. Shrool all of these days, but then you had sex with another man somewhere around the 14th. Yes. You also have the A circle. Explain this. That is your alleged conception date? Yes, ma'am. Explain. Um, I have a picture of a sonogram and it said 20 weeks and one day. And we counted back 20 weeks and one day and it was August 8th. Well, so we now have another possibility apart from Mr. Schroll. When Whitaker admitted that the sexual intimacy she had with this new possibility was unprotected, it confirmed the judge's thoughts. However, Judge Lauren decided to move on from that to discuss the circumstances surrounding Whitaker's delivery day. Let's see what that's all about. Is he there the day the baby was born? Yes. Nope. What happened is I get there and your little boyfriend at the time wants to talk all big over the phone and say how he's gonna he's gonna kick my butt and all my this. My boyfriend never threatened you at Wait all. Wait a minute, when did we get a boyfriend? After we had separated, I had started dating someone else. Are you on the birth certificate? No, ma'am. No, I go there, he cuts the umbilical cord, he's on he the birth certificate. He didn't even cut the umbilical cord. Slowly but surely, the truth is coming out. First, it was that Whitaker was intimate with the other possibility during her conception window. Next, Shrule's name is not even on the birth certificate. However, I get that Whitaker would react that way because, according to her, Shrull was AWOL since she got pregnant. She didn't get any support from him on her delivery day. I woke up from my C-section. He wasn't even there. I woke up the next morning and on Facebook, Christian had posted stuff all over Facebook about my boyfriend, about my family, saying baby mama drama already. I told him I don't want you to come back. I wouldn't have even got to hold the baby if it wasn't for the doctors. I don't know the name My of the aunt lets you in because she's the DOA the nurse. nurse. My the whole, nurse. My aunt is a nurse. Hmm. While Whitaker went on about the physical similarities,
similarities she sees in Brinley and Shrull, Judge Lauren asked Shrull whether, after Brinley was born, he started to build a connection with her, or at least even try to see her. Here is what Shrull had to say in response to that question. I honestly don't care to see her until I know for a fact she's mine because there's multiple possibilities to it. That's In other words, I've been here. on my own for the past two years doing it all by myself. From 18 to 20, I've been doing it by myself. This is why you have to be responsible for your own life. Young women. Women have had to learn. Yes, you are, I know. Mama's baby, Papa's maybe. There is too much baby drama from people who are not even proper adults yet. Even I would be tired of hearing what they had to say. So, the judge is ready to reveal the truth about Brinley's paternity issue. Is Shrull really Brinley's father, as Whitaker claims? We'll find out shortly. Mr. Shrull, you are her father. I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank then, I, you. then I apologize. I can give you a hug. <laughs> nice to see. And I see tears in your eyes, Mr. Stroll. You feel you feel emotional looking at your little girl? I'm kind of upset about missing that little bit and putting her through what I did. <laughs> Definitely gonna be there now. That's a fact. Puckett and Glover are two women who gave birth around the same time, and even named their sons after the same man, Stephen Macon. Now, Glover is Macon's current girlfriend, and they have a son. However, Puckett is at the court to prove that her own son truly belongs to Macon, seeing as he denies the paternity of her son. But what's the reason for his denial? She got five kids by five different baby dads. And you could be the sex. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. If we ain't have sex for like three months after, I wouldn't even have sex. But you did have sex me and, with her. Me and my, me and Ms. Glover, we wasn't together at the time. Did you use protection. Yes. You did. But it was. It's okay, but crazy. there was a malfunction. Right. Before we even had sick, three weeks after I met her, she got my Go name right tattooed up there on the her neck. Hmm. So they find out that Puckett is pregnant. And then what? According to Puckett, Macon was happy about her pregnancy and would always shower her with love. She also claimed that his love extended to him, massaging her belly frequently, excited that he had a baby on the way. For this last statement, Puckett provided the court evidence to back up her claim. And I have a picture of him that rubbing on my belly when Let I was about to Let me see that picture. Month. Jerome, will you hand it to me, please? Is this you, Mr. Macon? Are those your hands and your jacket? Uh, yeah. So what do you have to counter this evidence that Miss Puckett is presenting? It's not my child. I don't, it's, no, she was sleeping around with a whole lot of people. I know it for Do you have any proof of that? Did you bring the court? Man, we're about to witness another dramatic session again. Macon claims that he felt like Puckett got pregnant too fast, something he never expected, despite the fact that he was constantly having sexual relations with her. What a joker. Meanwhile, Puckett provided another piece of evidence to examine one of the points that she made in her testimony. Take a look at this. Her, her baby, and my kids, we all gonna move in together if it was his. Then he sent me another one said if it was his, it come out to be his, and we was gonna make love to the sunrise. Right. I said that. So you have evidence of that? I have one of one of the evidence. So this piece of evidence is a text. Yes from Mr. Make, mm -hmm. if he is, like I said. Why is he amused about this whole situation, though? I don't get it, do you? Anyway, the judge then asked Puckett to tell the court the details of what happened the day her son, Stephen Macon Jr., was born. Let's see what she had to say about it. Was Mr. Macon there? He came in, you know, and he was looking at the baby, playing with my son, and then so he said, um, what you, he said, so what you naming him? I said, I'm naming him after my brother. I said, because that's what my grandma wanted me to do. No, you're not, you're not naming him that. You're I not naming him that. You, you naming I left. Him. You naming I him. You you name him Steve. So he said, call the nurse. So I buzzed the nurse. The nurse was there as a witness, because you know the nurse gotta be there at all hospitals before they let you do sign anything an alpha date or anything like that. Of course, it doesn't. Yet, Macon hammered on his defense, claiming that Puckett's son isn't his. He also reiterated that he was not even there to sign the birth certificate, a document that Puckett confirmed he signed by himself. In fact, she provided the document at the court. I have proof showing that he signed a birth certificate. I'd I like birth to see right that. Now. Jerome, will you hand me that evidence, please? Certificate of live birth. Birth, child's name, Stephen Terrence Macon Jr. Father, co-parents, current legal name, Stephen Terrence Macon. Is that you, sir? No, I ain't saying it. You know, this court understands that sometimes we get a little less than the truth. At this point, both their testimonies are confusing. One party provides a signed birth certificate, and the other claims that it was forged. I don't even know what to make of this, such as who is telling the truth and who is lying. Anyway, Glover has taken the stand next to her man to give her testimony. Let's hear what she has to say. Miss Glover, we know that your child is named Stephen Macon Jr. as well. Correct. Do you believe Miss Puckett's child, Stephen Macon, 
Macon Jr. is in fact your boyfriend's biological child? No, I don't believe that at all. Why? Can I start from the beginning? Please Her sitting here saying that she didn't know about me, let me tell you. I was at work, I worked at a gas station, minding my own business, she sent some of her little f Oh, oh, it's about to go down. This woman has got no chill. But she wasn't even done yet. There's more. I already heard about the precious girl. So I'm like, your phone ringing, everything is starting to add up. Let me answer that for y'all in the plan. Hello, who's this? She like, my name is so-and-so. I used to live with Precious. It's sleeping with her. So I came to her door. I'm like, woman to woman, okay. He was like, he was like, oh no, don't go up there. So I'm already curious. I'm like, why doesn't he want me to go to this mysterious house if there's nobody there? I have to say, Miss Glover is a little cuckoo. She is clearly upset with what's going on between her man and his supposed baby mama, which is expected. But at some point, some of the things she was saying to Puckett didn't make sense anymore. Like this one. Cheers, I ain't never thought about getting no tattoo on me. You got five kids, but three weeks later, you go get a man tattooed on your back. <laughs> Miss Glover, she wouldn't have been prompted to fall in love enough to do something that as silly as put her, his name on the back of her neck if he wasn't with her. I mean, he can be with her all you want to be. But it's hard about so, at some point, you have to acknowledge that he was three with weeks, her. Three weeks, though. Just like Judge Lauren said, it's evident that Glover was all out for Puckett, ready to discredit her no matter what. And the man who caused the whole thing was standing right in the middle of the two women, acting meek as a mouse. Even when Glover narrates how she found out about another child being named after him, he blatantly lies to the judge. Girl named, uh, yo, uh, named her baby after you. And I mean, he looked devastated like me. I mean, literally. His, he dropped down like, you got to be kidding me. When you told him this information, mm -hmm. you truly thought he was genuinely surprised. Exactly. To he, hear that she had named exactly, her child Stephen because Macon it was, Jr. He stood so, on Mr. Macon, was this the first time? Yet, Macon vehemently denies being the one who signed the certificate, even to this moment. Everyone has had enough of the lies and drama, and we just need to hear the result of the DNA test. Mr. Macon Sr. are his father. She's talking about some, um, that's your baby, that you gonna, y'all can go have sex on into the sunlight. Your jerk factor is on 10, Mr. Macon. I'm not gonna lie. You have gotten on my last nerve today.